Let's assume that you have some code here and you want to surround this with a try so you can make sure that it doesn't fail. You can also, instead of using a catch, you can use a finally here. And you can say print ln finally. And perhaps let's have some something that we're supposed to execute after this. So we'd say print ln after check age. So we should not see check age execute because if the user's age or the person's age is less than 18, then we're gonna throw in a legal argument exception. But this is to show you that in a try catch or a try finally, yeah, the finally block will always execute. So even if an exception occurs inside of this try block, if an exception occurs anywhere in here, the finally block will always execute. So let's go ahead and execute that now. Let's run that. And what you're gonna see is that finally, which is right here, finally is printed but the exception the exception is still happening which is inside of check age and then basically the the program execution is stopping how do we know that the program execution is stopping it's pretty simple the print line which is called after try is not executing at all so what ends up happening is this block is executing and now we're seeing the finally run here and finally will be run uh, regardless what happens inside of try now this is very useful let's say if you've opened a a, a variable and it's perhaps reading a you know a, a file stream or maybe an audio store you know or audio or something like that that's going to take a lot of resources that you need to close to make sure there's no memory leak then maybe you would say you know you would have some type of variable called file stream and then inside of here you might say if a regardless what happens if i'm I get an exception or i don't I want to close down that stream so I can kind of clean up after myself and not have memory leaks. So it's a very common place to clean up for anything that you need that's resource intensive uh, or could possibly provide any type of memory leaks. You can put it inside of the finally area there. So if anything were to happen now, you can also combine a try finally with a try catch. So I could say catch, you know, e exception with exception and of course, we can do this so we can stack them and this works this is a very common pattern here so again you might want to use finally to clean up after something that you've again you maybe opened an audio source video source uh something that could leak memory but you might want to do something inside of this exception and say you know print ln you know handled or maybe you're, you're going to handle it a certain way so instead of you know let's uh, it's going to catch the illegal argument exception so let's go ahead and do illegal um, let's do a legal state exception. And if we run this, what we're going to see is we're still going to get the finally that's called, but we had the illegal state, the illegal um, argument exception was thrown. So what ends up happening is check age called, the exception was thrown immediately. This finally block realizes an exception was thrown. So finally is printed and then finally. The program says, hey, here's why we executed with this exception. Now, if we were to change this catch block to catch that legal argument exception, the whole program execution changes. So we're gonna see that the it's gonna it's gonna execute this, but it's gonna throw an exception. So we're not going to see this line of code. Remember, an illegal argument exception was called or thrown. The catch block sees that, says, yes, I can handle that. It then prints out handled, which is printed out handled here and then as always the finally block will always be run so we may need to clean up after some memory intensive stuff we'll then go ahead and execute the code inside of finally and then after that the program execution continues because the program didn't really crash we handled it right here and at that point it's executing after the try so you can perform a try and a catch and a finally you can stack them all on top of each other in kotlin and that's how you do it